Hi, I'm Valerie Steele, and our first speaker this morning is my colleague Melissa Mara, co-author of the book Fashion Underground, The World of Suzanne Barsh, who's going to be talking about the subcultural capitals, London and New York. Thank you, Valerie. Good morning. Former Village Voice journalist Frank Owen asserts, nightclubs are meant to function as laboratories of style, where new trends and modes of being are spearheaded. In the 1980s and 90s, fashion was integral to the nightlife and club culture in London and New York City, and the latter had a reciprocal impact on fashion. By the early 1980s, London's club scene has given rise to the highly influential subculture of the New Romantics. Nights at the Blitz in Covent Garden, for example, were instrumental in promoting the New Romantics' dressed-up aesthetic both domestically and overseas. A wine bar off Covent Garden, here fashion and music merged, producing the eccentric aesthetic that would dominate London's club culture throughout the decade. It was its eccentrically dressed clientele that gave Blitz its notoriety. Steve Strange's stringent door policy assured that only creative pioneers who looked like a walking piece of art gained entry. Rather than cater to celebrity clientele, many of the scene's standouts garnered fame in their own right. Designer John Galliano has attested, quote, the club scene fed me. Being with other creative people like Boy George was a crucial experience for me. Blitz inspired a host of one-nighter clubs, among them Taboo, which attracted a clientele of fashionable club personalities. Lee Bowery, in particular, became a prominent nightlife figure in London. Bowery's personality belied a serious interest in the history of fashion. His private library held numerous books about designers Cristobal Balenciaga and Christian Dior among them. Taboo provided Bowery himself with a venue for experimenting with performance art and showcasing his camp style, which became increasingly provocative. The club's mantra, dress as though your life depends on it or don't bother, promoted individual expression and a bold, exaggerated aesthetics. Bowery, a fashion extremist, strove to be unique. However, his influence would impact designers such as Alexander McQueen and John Galliano, just to name a few. During the 1980s, a number of New York City clubs, including Danceteria and Area, began catering to an art, fashion, performance crowd. The epic Danceteria presented fashion shows on its second level, introducing the industry to then unknown designers. Meanwhile, the mega club Palladium was forging its own connections between the art world and nightlife. Thus, Palladium commissioned works by designers such as Keith Haring and Kenny Scharf for the club's decor. Scharf's VIP room for Palladium is seen here. By the late 1980s, an economic crash and the AIDS epidemic ushered in a new conservatism that stifled the nightlife community. Suzanne Barsh moved to London in 1969 and immersed herself in the city's growing club culture. When Barsh moved to New York City in 1981, she brought with her a knowledge of London's club culture, its emerging designers, and fashion trends. Barsh opened a small boutique on Thompson Street where she featured imported clothes from emerging designers, thus serving as the de facto ambassador for cutting-edge British fashion. In 1987, she began hosting weekly parties at the nightclub Savage. These parties resembled fashion parades, where those seeking their fix of the underground scene could promote themselves through stylistic dress. In 1988, she began hosting a monthly party at Copacabana, attracting a large fashion contingent that included Jean-Paul Gaultier, Donna Karen, and Calvin Klein, as well as fashion photographers such as Stephen Meisel. Betsy Johnson, Stephen Sprouse, Andre Walker, and other designers were influenced by the atmosphere pervading New York clubs and used these as spaces to promote their designs. When asked in 1987 what he found most intriguing about New York's club scene, Lee Bowery cited the pyramid's uniqueness and people like Sister Dimension and Lady Bunny. Quote, their starting point is drag, but then they take it someplace else, making it more modern and exciting. There's nothing like that in London. In an unprecedented development in 1994, RuPaul became the face of MAC Cosmetics' Viva Glam campaign, which helped raise millions of dollars to help combat the AIDS epidemic. In 1992, Mugler began employing drag queens and transsexuals as runway models. The influence of 1980s and 90s club culture has endured. Gautier's spring 2013 collection, for example, called upon the sartorial style of Boy George. Music artists such as Nicki Minaj and Lady Gaga affirm the club culture ethos of self-expression and creativity. Gaga, in particular, has been credited with creating a nouveau club kid style. Today, nightlife empresarios such as Suzanne Barsh continue to create spaces for creativity to flourish. As fashion designer and nightlife personality, Dominique Echiavera remarked, quote, I look at nightlife as an opportunity to showcase my work. 
The club is a runway for the strange and the extraordinary. Thank you.